Hello, good afternoon and a very warm welcome to this live employer masterclass session from the Change in Education Group. My name is Amos Madri, your host and careers advisor here at the Change in Education Group. This is a great opportunity for you to learn about the world of work, hearing from great employers in terms of how they can support you and advise you in your own career journey. Joining me today is Penny Pickering, who's from Cabo Creative. Uh, Penny Pickering is the director of Cabo Creative, a website and design agency, a wife and wife team taking on the digital world. Back in 2017, Joe and Penny Pickering started up their dream creative agency, Cabo Creative, offering website design, graphic design, and related services. Cabo Creative continues to grow from strength to strength using Penny's marketing expertise and Joe's artistic flair to help clients build strong brands, optimize, optimize websites, and make their mark online. That sounds incredible. Penny, a very warm welcome to you. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Can't complain. It's great to have you here today. Um, I've been looking forward to this. You know, there's so much uh, that's uh, changed in terms of how we market products, how we reach people, uh, you know, who better than you to talk to in terms of how to uh, get the message out there to, to your audience. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself, Cabo Creatives, and how you and Joe uh, put this whole project together? Yeah, of course. So um, my background, uh, I worked in marketing um, and I worked my way up the career ladder, as you do. And I found myself spending more and more time managing people than actually doing the day-to-day -day work, which is a pretty, you know, standard career path. Um, but I, I found that I wasn't enjoying it anymore and that I actually quite like doing the day-to-day. -day. Um, so we took the jump, yeah, about four years ago now to set up our own company. Um, and now Cabo Creative works with um, anything from sole traders to medium-sized organisations to build their presence online and design assets for them. Um, and yeah, that, that's what keeps us busy all day. <laughs> and how's the past 18 months been for you? Um, they've been really good, which isn't, feels like an awful thing to say under so much flex. Um, we're very lucky. We, we set up our business uh, from day one, planning to be location independent. Um, we see that as the future of work and we're glad we did. So um, we were very much remote only. We almost never met with clients and sadly for the world it changed very quickly and our services were very much in demand as businesses needed to improve their online presence so yeah for us we've grown significantly over the last 18 months. Where do you see the industry going uh, at the moment what, what's uh, the one thing that's caught your eye and you've, you've seen a trend? Oh there's a million trends in design and web um, it's never ending there's a new trend every month but um, I, I think really our role is just to try and keep up uh, we're always trying to learn new design styles, new languages. Um, and we've gone so far as to buy ourselves a VR headset recently because we're not going to be designing websites in 25 years um, and we're still going to need to work. So you need to always be looking both at the short-term design trends, but also long-term, what skills do we need to keep up with the way the world is changing? Can you talk to us more about that, this VR uh, virtual world we're going into augmented reality oh, uh, ultra yeah. 4k hd uh, and so on <laughs> yeah so the world is very much changing i mean vr at the moment is a bit of fun um you know there's some great games on there there's some people designing some pretty cool things um but one day in the future it's it's realistic to imagine that you'll walk into a shop in your vr headset and try on some clothes and we spend a lot of our time designing e-commerce websites and realistically that that's going to change significantly. So currently for us, VR is a fun thing that we play Beat Saber on, but, um, you know, it, it's something that we need to be aware of. And it's certainly something we're looking at coding languages for so that when the time comes, we're ready. Yeah, definitely. And things are constantly changing. You know, I like the idea of having a VR headset on to go and try clothes and see <laughs> if it fits. And uh, if it's to. not, there's nothing to lose. Um, and I think in this uh, new COVID world that we live in, it makes absolute sense. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, it makes it easier for, for everybody. Um, do, do you find that you've got clients uh, who are calling you at all hours in the morning from different parts of the world? How do you, how do you deal with that? Um, it's not too bad. Most of our clients are in Europe. Um, so it, it, or with, a lot of them are within the UK. Uh, one of the hard things about 
freelancing or running a small business is that real blur in boundaries between work and home life. Um, and it's something we're definitely learning to handle better as time goes on. In the early days, there were certainly WhatsApps and calls outside of hours quite regularly. Um, really, it comes down to having the strength of will to handle it correctly. It's fine to be out of hours or to take a day off. And um, I've got into the habit of little things. Like when I decide to work outside of hours, I schedule emails to send in hours so that I'm not emailing my clients at 10 o'clock at night. So they shouldn't expect that, that communication from me. It is a challenge, but it's something we all have to work on. Yeah, definitely. I think we're all trying to find that balance, aren't we? Um, is that Joe behind you? It is, yes. Hello, Joe. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> I can't help but notice uh, you're working away there. I'm intrigued. What is it that you're working on? Video editing. Video editing. I like the setup you've got there. Is that Adobe that you're working on? It is, yes. I predominantly work in Adobe. Okay, and um, so what sort of uh, work are you doing there? This will be really interesting for our students uh, because this is the sort of thing they're trying to get into when they see someone's actually doing the work that they want to get into. <laughs> so It's um, just a, like a training video for a company yeah. that's um, they're, they're in financial services and they're rebranding and trying to get some videos out there for their new software that they're de developing. So I'm creating an intro training video for their employees and their customers it's just a simple couple of minute video okay so i can simple. see you've got two <laughs> screens there so yes. uh, the, the right screen's clearly uh, working away on the project itself what's the left screen is that the memo is that the, the that's where i have all of my other stuff that i need so all of my assets and my emails pop up on that screen it's it's my it's my over I like that. Do you know what? To, to me, that looks like left brain, right brain. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. So <laughs> left brain <laughs> is just there working nice and easy, nice and simple. Left brain's got all the admin, everything's there. Creative side is working away. And I could see the focus was on the right side. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's always my focus. <laughs> so you're definitely the right side of the brain. Yeah. Penny, are you the left side or the right side? Yeah, I think I'm more the left side of the business. Answer. So Joe very much is the design. At the moment, we're working on a website design for a new client. And so Joe will use a program like Adobe XD. And in that, she'll do like a flat lay of beautifully how the design could work. And then I'm the one that has the black and white screen with the code up, making sure that I can make it do things and have elements animate in and, and all of those fun things. So, yeah, we're definitely opposite sides, aren't we? Creative yes. and, and logic brain. But we work right. well because of it. Yeah. Yeah. And... With Adobe constantly changing, how do you keep up to date? How do you uh, keep your fingers on the pulse? How do you understand all the, it's a world in itself, it's a whole universe. How do you get to grips with all of it? I, I think time. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. time. I mean, I remember when we both started using the programs, um, it seemed incredibly overwhelming. So I think when you're starting, pick one and learn it well. So Joe was the queen of Illustrator before anything else. And that is oh, where yeah, she designed yeah, illustrations and icons. <laughs> Um, whereas I very much needed Photoshop to be able to edit images to fit websites. Um, so learn one. And once you really know one, all of the others just come. Like XD was um, yeah. a really natural flow for us because we understood the other programs. Excellent. And it's learning the whole, uh, whole suite, everything that comes into the whole Adobe. Uh, program incredible wow uh, i'm really intrigued it's just uh, it's great to see uh, you at work there and i think sometimes when we're talking it's difficult to explain but seeing uh, someone at work uh, makes it so much uh, easier and we can see exactly uh, how the whole thing works could you tell us in terms of um, going penny back to when you were 16 years old, you were thinking about the career you wanted to go into, um, you know, was it clear? Did you know what you wanted to do or? How, how, Not how at all. Not at all. So um, my older brother and my dad and I all loved cars and F1 and all of those kinds of things. So I left school and went to college to study motorsport engineering. Um, and then I ended up going off to university to study motorsport engineering. I dropped out after a year, worked in pubs for a few years, um, and then realised that I needed to get myself a degree because the world of work has changed and not having one wasn't great. And I picked a degree based on 
which ones would allow me to do it in two years rather than three because I knew I had a really short attention span and the options were business or marketing and I picked marketing. I don't think a career path is always clear when you're 16 years old and I think that's okay. Um, pick something you think you're interested with in and if it doesn't work out, you have the rest of your life to study something else. Um, yeah. Web development for me came from a chance job. I landed a role as a marketing manager at a web development firm. Um, loved the development side and then went off and learned how to code. So, yeah, no one's career path is straight. Um, yeah. I think that's great uh, advice and I think it's so difficult to explain that sometimes when you're talking to students um you know uh, some of the careers that people go into eventually in the future is not something they might have thought they'd see themselves doing not that there's a bad thing yeah. about it but it, th things happen and you know you find your niche you find mm -hmm. uh, where you know you're good at and you, you focus on that area uh, I think first of all taking going with your gut instincts and taking that chance on marketing led to uh, other opportunities coming for you mm -hmm. and uh, through that you know uh, you are where you are today so uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it was all worth it I suppose. Yeah, it all worked out in the end. But certainly, I, I think all, all you can do at such a young age of 16 is go after something you're interested in and just keep learning. Um, and, you know, it does have a way of working itself out. But certainly at that age, I, I did not know what my future self would be doing. Yeah. Now, Penny, I know that I am uh, supposed to be interviewing you, but since Joe's there as we well, pairs, I'm going to drag her into uh, the conversation as well. Uh, Joe, what was your route like from 16 and thinking about that career path and what you wanted to do? So at 16, uh, I, guess, I guess I always wanted to do something creative, but at that age, it's really tough to get your mind into, for some people, to get your mind into okay, this is my career. So I had to go out to work. And so I started working in pubs and I became a pub manager. And I did that until I was about 32. And when Penny left uni, we were like, right, okay, we've, I've got to sort my career out. You know, I don't want to work in pubs for the rest of my life. So I went to uni and I did a fine art course. And through lots of experience, going to uni and critical thinking and all the things they teach you, it led me into graphic design. And I wish I'd have done it when I was younger, but you know, nothing is linear and you've just got to keep, you've got to keep learning. And you've, like Penny said, you've got to do something that you're interested in. If I'd have done this when I was 16, then it's, it's not that I wasted all those years because I got a lot of other, other skill sets from being a pub manager. But I think, you know, you, you've always got to do something you're going to be interested in because you will swing back and go back to it at some point if you don't do it when you're young. And I think doing it when you're young is the best time to do it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, best time to do it when you're young. But then, you know, uh, it's, it's, again, things do work out. Um, and I think... Swings and roundabouts. Too, yeah, we can't be too hard on ourselves. But I think what I like as well, Joe, is when you had your back against the wall, it was... You know, I've got to do something here, and that, that's where, you know, you, you uh, I suppose, you know, you built that resilience and strength to say, right, I'm going to get through this. Um, and had it not been for those difficult times, you know, you wouldn't. I mean, be I might not have ended up here anyway. <laughs> you know, I could have started off in design and then gone on to something else. So, yeah. you know, your path is 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 never going to be straightforward, and you never know what's going to lead you where and why you you know what happens when you do what so I think you've, you've just always got to strive yeah that's great advice and you know in those difficult uh, times was it just trusting your instincts and um, of course having that support there uh, you know you're fortunate enough to have Penny there uh, but was it also that you know that trusting yourself and having that self-belief how much I guess so yeah, I think it was a confidence thing definitely and I think I got a lot of that from you watching Penny go to uni and do the things that she really wanted to do, it encouraged me to think, you know what, you know, I don't want to be working in pubs for the rest of my life and I've got Penny to support me. Why not just go and do it? You know, there's nothing stopping you. Yeah. And that's, that's what it was. It was yeah. just, just do it. 
Exactly. Just do it. I like it. Like a certain brand would say. (laughs) (laughs) No names. (laughs) So um, tell me, uh, Penny, what is it that you enjoy the most about what you do? What what is it that one thing that you look forward to? Oh, God. Some, you know, some questions make you think, oh, just one thing. Um, I think it's the fact that we can change what we do in employed work somebody else dictated what what we do and how, when you could be creative and who you could work with. Um, in what I do every day, I choose the clients that I work with. I work for projects that I believe in. And because I care, I, I do a much better job and I naturally strive to learn more. Um, the other thing that I really enjoy is I'm in charge of my own self-development. So I'll regularly take a, a day out once a month to go and look at a new code language or build up skills that interest me, that where I'm working for an employer, I'd, I'd struggle to do that so much. Yeah, definitely. Uh, like, uh, I, you know, uh, see where you're coming from there, just having that flexibility and being able to, um, you know, be creative. And when opportunities, for example, uh, on coding, you can go and take those classes, uh, go out for a walk, I suppose, if you want to. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, the pandemic. Did we yeah. walk? Once a day, every day. <laughs> Yeah, uh, like everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> What's the one thing that you enjoyed in the most? I know we've distracted you a little bit today. <laughs> What's the one thing for that you enjoy the most, Joe? Um, I think working together. When that, so at first it was it was really difficult to learn how to work with your partner because you're in each other's pockets <laughs> continuously, and there was there was a little bit of. It was difficult at first, wasn't it? Living together, eating together, working together. You know, it's a bit much. But I think now we've got that down. I, th- I think we work together very well. We know when to back off and when to give, give each other space. And this is why our desks are back to back, <laughs> because we get that space. But then if I want to go and work on something with Penny, I can turn around and we can get together when we're both in the right frame of mind and get things done. And it's quite... Uh, our skills complement each other very well. And that I think that's the bit that I enjoy the most now. I wouldn't have said that a couple of years ago, but yeah, <laughs> we got there. <laughs> and that's it. You find a way of working together and it can be difficult, you know, when you, you know, uh, you start to get on each other's nerves and, you know, uh, people's idiosyncrasies start to uh-huh. annoy yeah. you. And, you know, it's just the small things, you know, the, the straw that broke the camel's back the same, isn't it? <laughs> one more, one more. <laughs> but no I'm glad that you know you found a way to work together and uh, that's great um, so a lot of our um, audience students will be watching and wanting to um, get some advice because you know they see what you do and they think you know what I'd love to do that mm-hmm. um, but I just don't know what how I can get about into that industry I don't know what it takes I don't know what the pathway is what would you say to them how how can they get into uh, this sector what would they need to do <sighs> So, I mean, there's, there's two sides that it really falls into. You either have the, the creative, like Joe, or you have the, the more development side, like me. Um, the one thing that I wish had been more known when I was young was how easy it is to get into coding. Um, it is the future. It, there are so many jobs that are going to be based on having the ability to code. The salaries are good. You can work remotely. It, and it's fun. If you're the kind of person who likes the idea of building something from Lego because, you know, you make a structure... Or as a kid, I remember my parents would get me um, a, a thing where you could build a robot and then you could drive it around. And so if you're slightly geeky on my side, go to a website called codeacademy.com. It's completely free, amazing resources, and it will take you from the absolute basics right the way up to doing the most complex things you could imagine and right the way ready to interview for a coding job. Um, so if, if you're looking at my side, just go learn to code however you want to and, you know, enjoy it. I think on the design side, it's not so straightforward. I think there's a lot no, of it's not. bad unpaid internships on that side. But, you know, upping the skills to be able to draw, getting yourself, you know, a simple tablet that you can draw icons yeah. on. Yeah. Um, getting pra- I, think, I think practicing with the software and keeping your eyes open on what up and coming designers are doing and just keeping up with the trends and you naturally learn from that. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, 
going online and having a look at what people are doing and and also having a go yeah. so you know it's not hard to set up a really simple website even if you're more of a creative side and to have your own portfolio site I've seen younger people getting jobs on LinkedIn by creating some awesome design assets and just saying they're looking for a job and posting it on LinkedIn and you know that being picked up by the right person can really help people to, yeah, it's- to stand out think it's things like learning how to design a logo or a brochure or any of those things just getting your head into it and just being creative with it it's, you know it's about what being creative is it you know that's what it's all about yeah I'm really glad that you've picked up on that because when on this work experience program we've got project briefs that uh, the students work on alongside the activities and the sessions such as this that they take part in and the projects, uh, the, the work that they produce is incredible. I mean, you look at it and you think, you know, you you would pay, you know, a substantial amount to have that work done for you. And, you know, mm-hmm. there is definitely talent out there. There's a lot of young people who are very creative, really good at what they do. And I suppose it's just exposing themselves and being seen uh, by the right people. And I think, you know, Penny, as you suggested, being on LinkedIn uh, mm-hmm. is a good place for them to to, to network. Um, do you find that you get a lot of business on LinkedIn? Very much in our early days. I yeah, was super active on LinkedIn in yeah. the early days and it brought in a fair chunk of work. We've it, Four years in, we've reached a stage where all of our business comes from referrals now. So one client passes on the next. So we, we don't necessarily try to go out and make those connections online anymore. But it, it definitely worked for us in the early days. So it's a great place to be. Yeah, so being on social media is certainly helpful. Okay. Um, What final words would you like to leave our audience with? Um, Joe, can I start with you? What would you like to say to our audience today as your final words? Oh, gosh. Um, I think... I think it's not putting any boundaries on yourself and your abilities and the confidence is is a big part of 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 god i suppose i don't want to say succeeding because you know you don't necessarily have to succeed in everything you do because failures also create who you are and it and you learn from them but i don't know i think it's just don't put any boundaries on yourself and just go for it i, I think I think that's all it is. Yeah, I think I struggled a lot when I was younger because I didn't have the confidence to do anything. And I think if I'd have had that confidence and didn't put so much pressure on myself, I would have I would have figured things out a lot earlier. Yeah, great advice. Don't put that pressure on yourself and just have yeah. that confidence, definitely. Penny, what would you say to our audience? I think the number one thing that I'd say to anyone young going into the world of work that's slightly inclined that way is go learn to code. I, I can't shout it enough. And especially um, women can code too. I think there's so few of us in the industry. Um, there's room for us. Um, and yeah, it, it's like the secret to being able to find a way to work in the job that you want and earn decent money. So yeah, if you're slightly interested, go learn to code. <laughs> And there's lots of creative great techie <laughs> different ways of approaching that <laughs> and, and there are lots of great uh, resources out there and it's it's great to speak to uh, you know people like yourselves who are actually working in the industry who are in a great example as to what can be done and you know you've uh, got the best of both worlds you know you, you you're independent you're working for yourself but then you're doing this uh, great program that you've always wanted to to go into yeah it's been super lucky and you know being self-employed isn't something you're going to do at 16 but it's certainly something you can work towards and for us it it really was life-changing but we had to go and do our dues first you know we had to learn how a working environment works before we could operate with our own clients so I think but it's a great thing to strive to it's hard work but it's so rewarding Incredible. Wow. Um, it's been an absolute joy just to uh, hear from both of you. I think we were, we're very lucky. We uh, we got a two for one deal here today. You uh, did. Very, <laughs> very lucky indeed. So, Joe, you know, just want to say a huge thank you uh, for stepping away from your desk and uh, spending <laughs> time with us. Um, you know, it's been an absolute joy just hearing from both of you. Thank you so much. Uh, for sharing your wisdom, your knowledge and experiences with us. Uh, And they they really hope we do have you back on again. 
No, it's been great. Yeah, it's been nice to talk to you. Thank you, guys. Well, there you have it. It's been an incredible week. What a week we've had of virtual work experience. Uh, You guys have been really busy. Great to have so many of you engaging with the content. Uh, Thank you so much to all of you sending in your project briefs. Of course, we will grade those and we will send that back to you along with your certificate. And thank you for submitting your elevator pitches as well. We really do appreciate it. Thank you so much for taking part in this week of virtual work experience from all the team here at the Changing Education Group and for myself, Amos Madra. Thank you very much indeed. Take care. Bye-bye.